Here's when my parents hired an exorcist to get all the demons out of my room that they thought were making me gay. Devil, go in Jesus' name. Jesus name. You foul spirit, you leave in Jesus' name. What has happened in this closet in Jesus' name? Every evil spirit, go now in Jesus' name. Evil spirit, go now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. The presence of God. Whew. Something was in here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We are now we commission angels to be in this closet. Some real work being done in the Hartzler household. There's Andrew Hartzler again. If you guys don't remember him, he was the one who was kicked out of All Right University. I believe that was university he was kicked out of because they don't allow humans that don't match up to exactly what they tell them to be, being gay or anything else, to be at the school, which he hid for a very, very long time. Eventually even came out to his parents, which the result of that is in having an exorcism being run through his household because of who he is. Imagine from the perspective of a kid, now an adult, but who grew up in this type of situation where the whole time they're like, listen, we have to change you. What God made you is wrong. Now pray to God to change you from what he did. It doesn't have to make sense. But also another name of Hartzler might stick out to you guys because his aunt is former representative Vicki Hartzler of Missouri. She's known for saying crazy things like this. Remember this lady? Today, a United States Congresswoman, my Aunt Vicki, started crying because gay people like me can get married. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. I yield back. So despite coming out to my aunt this past February, I guess she's still just as much as a homophobe. The bill's implications, submit to our ideology or be silenced. It's more like you want the power to force your religious beliefs onto everyone else. And because you don't have that power, you feel like you're being silenced, but you're not. You're just gonna have to learn to coexist with all of us. Here's a question I have, uh, Burbank, to start off before we go to the more details of what uh, has happened to Andrew throughout his life. Because we recapped a little bit, but there's even more since. Because this is the latest, the exorcism uh, throughout the house. So uh, say that people, like, there's people go into these things under, understanding that this is reality. This is the way it should be. So because they know their son is gay, then they have to bring in an exorcist to go and change the energy of the house and exalt, uh, I mean, uh, and push out the devil. Because that's the reasons why it's happening in their opinion. If that's the case, um, if you didn't know, if you never came out to you, how would that ever be remedied? Or is that okay that it's not remedied? Uh, it's who he is. Would it come out in any other kind of way? It's just, it doesn't seem like it's a very foolproof way of thinking how this whole thing works. He can't get rid of it. So you need some stranger who doesn't know him to come in and rid the house of the spirit. Well, that's why the, the guy's in the closet. He's doing the exorcism yeah. in the closet for a reason. He's like, oh, I feel like something something was in here. And then he says, Jesus, I pray that there will be angels in this closet. And that's for when the son gets forced back into the closet. They want the angels to be in there with him to keep him company. Uh, imagine having to fake an exorcism. <laughs> like they have the Bible and they're doing the thing and you're like, oh, okay, like you got it. Just leave me alone, let me live my life. The other thing, this guy's aunt is giving that speech in a leather blazer and that haircut. <laughs> the most homophobic people are the most prominent members of our community. I didn't notice it. Uh, the that, uh, that caramel <laughs> leather jacket. Well, <laughs> Come on. I can I, maybe I can't say this because I list, I grew up in Missouri, but only in Missouri. <laughs> Maybe Iowa and Nebraska and Tennessee, who knows, but all the same. A little bit more about Andrew though, because look, this is what he's dealt with this whole time. Leading up to again, this whole thing with exorcism in his house. When he first came out, he was 14 years old to his parents and they signed him up for conversion therapy. He's now 25 years old though, and he grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. And his family is part of this whole conservative evangelical religious sect called the International House of Prayer. I thought that was pancakes. He told Insider that when he first came out to his parents at 14, they sent him to an anti-gay conversion camp. This is this quote, it was like some of the darkest moments of my entire life. It basically just teaches you like learned self-hate, like learning to repress half of your mind, it's exhausting. 
Then he was sent to a conversion therapy counselor three times a week throughout high school. Then he was sent to Oral Roberts University where they made him sign some kind of pledge that he's not who he is. Then if that came forward, then he'd get kicked out. Then his parents said, hey, we're only gonna pay for the school that you go to the, for you to go to where you'll be hated your entire life. Imagine your existence from the moment that you realized who you are, that the people that you're supposed to trust the most told you, hey, we love you, but everything else about you is hateful. Well, I'm not sure if they even told him they loved him. Maybe they just said, we won't love you until everything about you has changed the way that we think. Strictly based off of who you love. That's the basis, nothing else. Not not his grades when he got to that university, not any, uh, 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 any other uh, accomplishments he made outside of school. Not any things he's done to make them proud. It's about thinking about his penis and where he's attracted to people. That's what his parents are thinking about. That's what they're concerned with and it's odd for them. Uh, that he's not like them. Thoughts International of House of Prayer. We almost had to cancel IHOP, JR, if you had said pancakes there. It would have caused unintended consequences. Really <laughs> uh, the little half smile is gonna become something completely different when it comes to International House of Prayer. It's angry as F. <laughs> but I think First, you're right, like yeah, you're right. right. As someone who grew up queer in America, there's nothing anyone could have said to have changed me. Like there's no cultural differences that could have changed me. There's no like religion, there's no exorcism, there's no nothing. Parents thinking differently, nothing. It comes from within you. And so all of these parents that are putting in so much effort to change their kids, make it so that they never have an image of someone to look up to who's gay or have any role models or any sense of what a family might look like with people who are gay, it's not gonna work. It's a feeling that comes from inside of you. And maybe everyone's different, but as someone who is queer, who my first crush was on another girl and that was super confusing. I don't think any of this stuff is gonna work. There's always gonna be gay people, I'm sorry. It's been 11 years of them pushing this. He was 14 when he came out to them, he's now 25. They've been pushing this for 11 years. So eventually you either go, man, what I'm doing isn't working or I, don't, I shouldn't believe that what I'm doing will work. Maybe he gets to be who he is. And if that's the way this whole thing works, if your conversion therapy did work, I guess it will fulfill all these conspiracy theories that had them believing that the president, school board members, teachers that don't get paid enough are pushing straight children to be gay. Cuz they convert them apparently to the LGBTQ community by going, hey, gay people exist. That's all it takes apparently to convert people. So why doesn't the prayer and the the conversion therapy and the exorcisms work? Who knows, we're just here until the, someone else gets elected, then we stop talking about this. One more thing I want to bring up Burbank, and I talked to my producers about this earlier. It's Pride Month, um, there's lots of celebrations going on and it's beautiful. Uh, it's people that are, are celebrating who they are because most every other time, they're being demeaned and attacked and threatened for who they are. So the whole thought of they're putting this in front of our faces, how much are you in front of everyone else's faces? Who's going into Target stores ripping down displays? Whose faces are you in? I've walked by Target displays, it wasn't in my face because the Target display was here and my face was here because I was looking at the candy on the shelf because that's what I was there for. Anyways, the point is as we go into the Pride Month, the uh, anger, the violence and the uh, attempts on people's lives seem to be going up just even when it's not. So as they see people actually out in the streets being who they are, that's when, as since we're talking about evil and the devil, that's when these hateful, evil, satanic people will show up. I want everyone out there to be very careful where you are. Be aware of your surroundings and understand that we've got terrorists in our country that want nothing to do with you except kill. I just want to point that out because I, I it hit me over the weekend. I just, I want it to be known that you, we got to be careful out there, you guys. Be vigilant, but still celebrate who you are. At no means should you be running away. Let's yeah, take this first. Right. Sorry, you don't know. Yeah. One more. Yeah, one more. Go, go. Just that Stonewall, like the first pride was a riot for our rights. Yes. And it's crazy that we're going back to a, to a time where people have to be on the defensive and there's the risk of violence celebrating pride again. Because for a few years there, it was a fun parade. And now we're back to this where there's a, a risk and it's going back to us actually having to fight for our rights again. All over again, it's the regressive policies. If you, if you keep seeing the same stuff happening, they're pushing us back and they keep going back to the good old days when we could murder folks that we thought were weird. This is the people we're talking to mm -hmm. and those politicians that push the pundits that push it could not care less once people get killed over their, their rhetoric. Cuz it's money and it's power and it's position.